Just imagine having an operating system for your life that displays the right information in the right format, in the right order and at the right place to make sure that you take the right action at the right time in the right way considering your high level aspirations in life. Thanks to Notion, it's now possible. In this video, you will be getting a sneak peek of my life operating system. It's called the Core OS. It's a system that not only organizes your entire life but also helps you design your life intentionally. You may have read a lot of books but failed to implement the learnings from those books. Our system disciplines you to operate by the learnings of various top 4% books by design. Jim Brown said, if you don't design your own life plan, chances are there that you will fall into someone else's plan and guess what they have planned for you? Not much. If you feel that your thinking is cluttered and foggy and you're not clear about the actions to take for maximum leverage, it's high time for you to adopt a system to operate by in your life. I know distraction is a widespread problem. My mission is to help 100,000 creative professionals design their life and business holistically. It's my purpose. I believe a problem created by the persuasive systems can only be ended by another system like the core OS. Hey friends, if you're new here, my name is Akshay Hello. I'm a professional blogger, been into blogging for the last nine years, YouTuber and a self-growth enthusiast. If you resonate with this, please consider subscribing. I can came across Notion back in 2019 on Product Hunt. It is the most upvoted product on Product Hunt. I came across videos from Ali Abdal, Thomas Frank, William Nutt, Marie Pauline, and many other people. In the meanwhile, I was also exposed to personal knowledge management concepts as well by the likes of tools like Obsidian. Later, as I was exploring and learning Notion, my friend asked me, why not you be a Notion coach for creative professionals like, you know, bloggers and YouTubers for designing their lives? I instantly saw all my passions coming together. You know, self-development, content creation, transformational coaching, and also my addiction to apps and softwares that sometimes go overboard. Well, here I am with the Core OS. And keep in mind, Core OS is a complete operating system, not yet another mediocre Notion template. It's time to set a new level of standard in the Notion creator economy. Now to the topic. What the heck is the core system? In the core system, C stands for core elements, O for objectives, R for resources, and E is for execution. It's strategically designed from the ground up using first principles reasoning based on how humans operate in their life. You see, every human being should discover and strengthen their core elements in life, like their purpose, you know, the big why, principles for direction and decision making, values and priorities, identity, habits and manage their life areas well. With these core elements in place, every human being should move towards their set goals and objectives in each area of their life by having access to right resources to execute on the right projects and tasks at the right time in the right way. Before diving in, I just want to let you know this is just an overview video of the entire system. This will be followed by an in-depth video series on system implementation step by step. Head over to coresystem.io. As of now, there is a special launch offer. Just apply the coupon code and you know what to do. And also do subscribe to my weekly newsletter. With this, you get free access to some of my specialist Notion templates. Also, I share the coolest things I learn every week when it comes to various shiny new digital workflows, apps, and insanely actionable productivity advice as well. It's the kind of newsletter you read from start to finish. Word by word. Give it a shot. You can unsubscribe at any time in one mouse click. All right, back to the topic. In our system, the core dashboard is the main high level dashboard. This is where you will manage the system and navigate it. Think of this dashboard as a map or a control center for your life operating system. Here, when you scroll down, you can set up your life areas. These are nothing but different areas of your life that require your attention. Just think of different hats that you wear in your life. For me under business, I have areas like blogging, notion, and coaching. And under personal, I have health, fitness, and travel. And under growth, I have learning and networking. This encompass both uh, business and personal growth. Let me create YouTube as a life area. If you set an area status to post, 
next up or inactive, you won't be seeing them on the main dashboards. You can set any area as a core area to systematically prioritize it throughout the system. You know, 80-20 rule uh, in action. Now, when you scroll down, the first thing that you need to do is set up your area's macro objectives. These are like three to five long-term objectives that you need to work towards in order to achieve your goals. These are based around strategies and they don't have due dates. As you can see, I have set these uh, uh, three strategic objectives for YouTube. Let me create one more objective here, say increase video click-through rate. You know, when people encounter my videos on YouTube, they need to click on them, right? That That's also one of my objectives. I also can add a link to my YouTube analytics to measure the click-through rate here. Now, I can set a yearly goal, like reaching 10,000 YouTube subscribers. Also, I can set goal priority, end date, metrics for tracking, and whatnot. Here's the real big problem with goals. Consider this, there are multiple ways by which you can achieve this 10,000 subscribers mark. To make sure that this goal is achieved, considering my values and long-term health of my YouTube channel, I need to also keep the macro objectives that I've set before also in mind. Once the area goals are set, you need to plan projects. Here it may be beneficial for you to just take a look at all the macro objectives that you have set and try to come up with the projects that best serve those objectives. For example, if one of my macro objectives is to increase my video's average viewer retention rate, I may need to have a project to hire a good video editor. For a new project I create, I need to set a priority, timeline, quarter, and set goal as well. So once you're ready, you can select any of these project templates that I will be covering later. And below that, you have area resources. Here you can manage all the skills you need to master in the specific area. For YouTube, you have skills like video creation and storytelling and also you can enter in the people you may need to consult when it comes to like in this case YouTube based on how much impact they can have in your life you can also mark them as core and you can consider having a personal board of uh, advisors for every area that you're managing your life right inside of notion because quality people lead to quality decisions uh, that in turn lead to quality outcomes and triangulating your views with believable people is the key. Once you have set up everything that you need, head over to the plan dashboard. Here you will be able to view your projects sorted by the timeline or the due dates. And you can also view all your projects by status, areas, and also by timeline. Under timeline view, you can easily set the date range or timeline for the projects in a visual way for utmost clarity on what's coming next. Next is micro objectives. Let me select this course creation project. We have micro objectives for this like mind map the course, create the course, record the course, and of course, make the course live. So these are actionable project milestones that make sure that your day-to-day -day actions will be aligned with your long-term projects and goals. Once you're done with your project planning, you can head over to the action dashboard. Here, you can manage your tasks you need to execute on your daily basis. Just below that, you'll also be able to conveniently see all the current projects that you're working on, micro objectives sorted by due dates, and also the goals goals that you have set. You can as well add any task that needs to be executed for the day and uh, select the task type, set a time block. In this case, it's a quick task that I will be completing in batch when my work day starts and you will be all set. On the side note, we have created periodic review um, recurring template tasks here, weekly review, monthly review, quarterly review, so that on a periodic basis, these task entries will be created so that you will be reminded about the things that you need to do in your weekly review sessions as well. This is a great way to include recurring tasks without cluttering this templates view. With this strategic dashboard design, you have utmost clarity on the immediate tasks that you need to execute for maximum impact on your goals and set objectives. Now, when it comes to managing your tasks, there may be times when you need to capture new tasks quickly as they hit your head. Whenever you want to add a new task, you do not have to go to, you know, project workspace or action dashboard in order to do that. You can just capture any new task right in the main core dashboard. It will be added to your task planner as an inbox item. You can either head over to the task planner dashboard or the action dashboard. There, you need to scroll down and here you can decide what you want to do with those tasks that you have captured 
throughout the day. You may need to trash them, execute them someday, do them, delegate or follow up. This is GTD task management in action. For example, I may need to research some course ideas today or add these two items to someday list, archive my book publishing idea, add it to someday and add some follow up tasks and finally schedule a meeting with Rob on Monday. For a more macro level view, you can also view all the weekly tasks in a board view or in the calendar view. This way you can see if there are any events that are coming up and plan your tasks accordingly. If you integrate this with Google Calendar, it will be even more powerful. Planning the tasks like this inside of the action dashboard can be good for planning standalone tasks, but not for task planning which are part of a project. For this, you need to use our project management system. When you open a project, apart from the regular fields, you can import in any notes that you have taken in your bookmarks you have added via Notion Web Clipper right into the project. Let me import my book summary of course design formula that would be helpful in this project um, that is around course creation. Here you will be able to see the tasks and micro objectives associated with this project. Remember, we have created them earlier. So when you scroll down under project planning section, you can plan out the different objectives and tasks for the the project. Objectives can indeed keep track of the deliverables of the project. Next, after brainstorming tasks that you need to execute, you can add three to seven tasks that you need to execute in the next week or so in the tasks table. Set the due dates for them and select task type. In here, you will be able to create project notes that will be stored in a separate notes database in our system and also create project specific pages that can hold assets, deliverables and other project related files. You can here see it it has automatically pulled all the relevant knowledge topics that is course design and uh, community management and also you can access the notes and bookmarks that you have imported while first setting up this project. At the bottom you also have project bottlenecks section. This helps you identify the bottlenecks or challenges that you are facing that are holding you back from progressing in the project as originally planned. Well, this is the most ideal setup for project management. Apart from tasks and projects, you need to also make sure you execute on all your daily habits. They're like building blocks of your behaviors and ultimately your destiny. So you can manage all your habits by different time blocks of the day for effective habit execution. With this, you will be able to get full benefit of habit and temptation bundling. When you head over to any habit, you can change the status and select any life area, like the area which the habit is serving. And also you can change the time block to execute the habit. And also you can add in some notes on how you can make the habit execution easy using the principles from books like Atomic Habits. Also, you can set any habit to be tracked so that they will appear under tracked habits, which is also visible in your regular action dashboard on a day to day basis. When you come to the regular action dashboard, we have a section called as daily tracking. At the end of the day, you need to add in some highlights of the day, like make sure you include mistakes you may have committed in the day as well in these highlights and also add your focus score out of 10. Next, you need to just tick off the top five habits that you're tracking as well. For setting the habits you need to track, you need to edit the today template. You need to track five habits at once. You see, this is a really well thought out minimal habit tracker. We do not have separate properties for habits and relations to relate habits with the day pages and all those things. Because when you have separate properties for each habits and relations and all these things, adding new habits to track and ticking habits every day would be a hassle. Now in the daily page below this section, you can also do daily journaling, but I strongly suggest you do your daily journaling in a physical journal with a physical pen because with this you slow down your thinking and you get room to think because the therapeutic benefits of physical journaling far outweighs the benefits that you get from keyboard or autocomplete journaling in a digital environment this daily tracking data will be available to you in your weekly and monthly review sessions there are various filters for you to use here to help you understand how your performance is correlating with your ability to to focus and habits. You'll be able to identify a lot of these patterns and really design your life in a more mindful way. For example, you can see on the days when my focus score is nine out of 10, I was consistent with my habits. 
I can just take time and reflect and get some more insider insights. People often tell, take massive action. Even I tell this most often. But listen, reflection on your actions you take on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly basis is as important as taking action in the first place. So let's discuss about periodic review system built right into the core S. Let me explain weekly reviews that you will be doing at the end of every week and is by far the most important one. First, you need to do some unhooking rituals. That means you will be clearing your inbox and setting up your mind to be quiet and focus on the review. Set a timer. As a first step, you need to review your past week's actions. You will be presented last week's highlights and also your daily focus and habit scores. You'll also be able to see your habit streaks and how many tasks you completed last week. And also uh, you can review any notes that you took throughout the week and maybe favorite them. By this, you will be able to identify the correlations between your habits, behaviors, and how they are influencing day-to-day -day productivity. Also, you have the weekly assessment questions that you can answer in a physical journal. If you have access to our content management system, you will be able to do content performance analysis on all the new content that you published the last week. It helps a ton to reflect on past content performance if you are into content creation. You get many actionable insights on how to go forward in your next content publishing game. As a next step, you will be inputting your past week's reflection entries on what things went well and also what are all the mistakes that you committed in the last week. These mistakes and weekly wins will roll over to the monthly reviews where you will be learning from those mistakes and later you will be forming the principles from the learnings from the mistakes that you got in your uh, monthly and uh, also weekly reviews that I will show you soon. The next step would be plan the upcoming week based on the reflection and review of the previous week. So you need to just set up your upcoming week, set a focus for it and drag it to set the date range. Additionally, you need to update the status of the projects, the progress of the micro objectives and also the goals to update those shiny progress bars. Next up, you will be planning tasks for the upcoming week. When you're planning out the tasks, look at your inbox and see what can be scheduled for the upcoming week. Afterwards, you need to consider refining your day theming table. In short, you will be refining what needs to be executed on what days of the week and at what time blocks. Next, you have the monthly review dashboard. Here as well, you will be reflecting on the past month's actions, you know, weekly wins and mistakes that you have entered previously, and also average focus and habit scores from the last four weeks or last 30 or 31 days. Here you can see your habit performance la from the last 30 days and identify any behavioral patterns and uh, correlations. Based on all this data, you will be refining the habit execution and you will be asking yourself whether you need to be doubling down on any habit, add some notes on how you can make habit execution easy and decide whether and what habits that you need to start or stop tracking. Next up, considering the focus that you have set for the previous month and also based on reflection from the past four weeks, you will be inputting all the wins and also the learnings. These reflections roll over to the quarterly review uh, for creating your guiding principles. Principles. You know, you'll be reflecting on the recurring patterns in your monthly wins and monthly mistakes uh, learnings that I will be explaining. Now to the planning, you need to set a new month, right, for the upcoming month and set the focus of the new month. Select the start date and you will be good to go. As a next step, you may need to ask yourself whether there are any life areas that you need to consider pausing for a while until the next month or so, uh, so that you can double down on some areas that may have been overlooked. And now you need to plan your upcoming month. Here you will be updating the status of the projects or adding any new project that you may need to pursue. You can also cross check if you're over promising yourself and if the objectives are realistic right? and also take a sneak peek at the current goals as well and ask yourself if you are able to reach your goals at the current pace. Next, we have the quarterly reviews. Here, the first step is to validate the values that you have set in life and ask yourself if the life areas you are currently working on are really satisfying the values that you have set in life and prioritize them accordingly for the upcoming quarter. Because most of the times, the lack of this alignment between your values and life areas is the major source of lack of fulfillment in life. And now, in here, you will review your successes and learnings from the past quarter, that is from the last three months, monthly entries. And also reflect upon the content performance reports in case if you are a content creator. And now, you need to use all this analysis data to update your principles based on what you have learned from your weekly and monthly reviews, forming your guiding principles is one of the highest leverage activity that you will be doing in your 
quarterly reviews. You need to add in or tweak your life area principles and also update your core principles in life that are more overarching to all your life areas. According to billionaire investor Ray Dalio, identifying your mistakes and deeply reflecting on them and forming overarching principles to abide by in your life is the best way to make progress. Well, this methodology is embedded right inside CoreOS. Later, you will also be updating the habits you will be executing accordingly. In the planning section, as usual, you will be setting up the upcoming quarter and filling in the focus for the new quarter. Accordingly, you will also be planning the new projects, objectives, and goals. Next, you will be refining your identity visualization script that you will be visualizing as a part of your morning ritual to help shape you as a better person. In these quarterly reviews, you need to refine the script considering the new goals and objectives that you may have set. This step is for you if you have truly internalized the fact that visualizing your desired identity vividly every day is the number one keystone habit because your habits and behaviors are dependent on whom you believe you are. Let that sink in. Next comes the yearly reviews. In your yearly review sessions, you will be reflecting on all the things that happened in the past year. You will be presented a summary on what all the things that happened in the last 12 months. You will be presented the monthly wins and learnings that you noted down to just give you a mental jog of all the things that happened. Also, you will be presented with quarter-wise projects that you worked on, objectives that you have achieved or uh, missed, and also goals. Based on this, you will be opening your physical journal and writing and answering this list of assessments questions. These questions are based around the classic methodology of reflecting upon the people, places, experiences uh, that shape you as a person the previous year. I am a big fan of answering these questions on the physical paper or a journal with a physical pen rather than right inside of Notion because this is a therapeutic process and we are not freaking robots. Embrace the process, not the discoverability of your journal entries in the future. Okay. Once your assessment is done, you need to reflect on what all the achievements and disappointments that you got from the previous year. And also this is the right time for you to revisit your values and priorities to see if they have also been changed and reconsidering your life areas, asking questions whether you have outgrown some of your life areas. So now let's discuss how to plan for the new year in CoreOS. For this, you will be setting up a page for the new year and then you will be planning your new year's goals in each of the core elements of your life. And also refining the strategic macro objectives that you have set for your life areas. In here, you need to also ask yourself like if there are any uh, new strategic objectives that are worth pursuing in these areas or whether you need to consider pausing some of these macro objectives. And also you will be planning new projects for the upcoming year. The two main lists here are next up and pause projects. And you will be planning out new projects. Again, don't over plan the projects here in this yearly review because planning one to two projects per quarter is more than enough. Uh, there's a reason why I have not included the whole project planning calendar here. Once this is done, you'll be vividly visualizing how your next 12 months will be in the light of the new goals and projects that you have set. You'll be refining your identity visualization script as you did with your quarterly reviews to help you become a new person, to help you accomplish the new goals and objectives that you have set for the new year more easily. Because remember, your identity determines your behaviors and eventually your outcome and predictive outcomes require predictive behaviors that can be only accomplished by predictively shaping your identity. Think about it. Now, how good is a life operating system if it doesn't have a knowledge management system built in? Well, here's the fact. Notion is not a specialist in personal knowledge management system yet. So you can feel free to use any other apps like Obsidian, especially for your personal research projects. But for most non-geeky people out there, I want you to manage your knowledge in Notion because the emergent benefits of having one system wherein you will be managing both your project related knowledge and also the project related tasks and resources will be invaluable. In Notion we will be managing our knowledge in a separate dashboard called the learn dashboard. So here you first have the bookmark section. Here you will be able to access all the books, articles, videos, courses and other content that you have bookmarked making use of Notion Web Clipper. This database can also be used for your wish list items and whatnot. Based on these bookmarks you may need to take notes on certain books, articles, articles, videos, courses, or meetings that you have. If you're taking any new book note, you can click on the new book note and it will load up a book template for you. Here you can paste in your book cover and now scroll all the way down and start taking notes with your own headings that fit your mental schema. After you're taking the notes, you can
can consider synthesizing the key highlights or the summary of the notes in the summary section and also note down actionable strategies because it will be very helpful in case if you want to import this note into any of your future project for implementation we have similar templates like this for all content formats if you are undertaking any course use the course note template to take notes on different lessons summarize learning from various modules and also note down actionable strategies from the course that you take as you will be assigning these notes to different topics all the notes relevant to that topic will be available under their corresponding topic pages these topics are also grouped by life area so that you have domain specific libraries waiting for you by analyzing all the notes that you have taken and the highlights that you have made you can add a distilled version of the knowledge that you have gathered you only need to fill out this section once you have a critical mass of notes and you feel like you need a separate page or a map to outline the learnings you have got from various notes under a specific topic as a side note if you are using readwise you may need to sync its highlights in a separate database apart from the regular bookmarks or notes databases i, I will be explaining the workflow in a future video and after managing your knowledge there may be some key learnings that you need to revise every day for that we have the core connect dashboard wherein you will be managing and strengthening all the core elements of your life as a part of your morning ritual here you will be able to connect with your purpose mission vision values and principles that guide your behavior do note that you can form principles out of the learnings that you have got from uh, various books that you read as a part of your knowledge management right so if you remember these principles or the overarching learnings that you have got from your quarterly reviews as well got to review them every morning to set the direction for the day and prime yourself in the right direction you will be also revising your core values in life and also you will be doing something called as identity visualization every day in the morning wherein you will be vividly visualizing the kind of person you want to be in order to deserve the goals that you have set for yourself this is important because when you change your identity your habits and thinking will also follow the changed identity and also along with these things you will be able to manage and review your daily habits and you will be reviewing some pointers on how to effectively move forward in the day by properly prioritizing your actions and reducing the distractions this core connect activity is all about priming yourself for success throughout the day you need to do this every day early in the morning as part of your morning ritual also in our core os especially if you have got our content creation system we have something called as the create dashboard for you content creators out there under that you have different channels that you can manage let me select youtube and here if i want to enter in a new video idea i can create a page for it after that i need to head over to validation section and see if the topic is really worth creating content on uh, by doing supply demand analysis you know keyword and uh, competitive uh, topic research set the planned publish date and mark it as next up now as the project progresses over time i will be dragging the item from research phase to writing phase in video creation it would be script writing and then edit it once you review the edit make sure it's ready to publish and move it to reviewed all the reviewed content will be present under to publish view wherein you can set the actual publish date enter in the url and mark it as published so we have wide range of templates for different content types for example in the new video template you have video checklist detail sections to plan out the thumbnail and do keyword research and finally an area for scripting or outlining we have a similar template for planning out blog posts as well with checklist research area and outlining section apart from all this we have a dedicated dashboard to do post publish content performance analysis here you will be presented with all the content you have published recently and you can just reflect on things that went well and things that could have been improved in each of those recent content projects when it comes to resources you need knowledge and also support of people in various areas of your life right so we have people or contact management system also built inside of coreos for this you just need to head over to the networking dashboard and there you have it you can have different people with different relationships have included some properties like um, even customer and client as well just to preserve the optionality for you guys to build a robust crm on top of this you also can mark a person as core and also to network if you want to build that connection with them similar to this to network view we have connections views friends and colleagues so you can relate these contacts or people to your different life areas as well if i go to my life area that is say notion i'll be able to see people in my database that are related to notion as an area now that's a fair overview in the next videos in this series i will be 
diving in deep into each of these components. For that, first you may need to get your hands on the Core OS. You need to consider heading over to our website and purchase the Core OS. With this purchase, you get lifetime access to our system. And also, I am active on Twitter in case if you are interested in my sporadic atomic ideas that I share. If you have liked this video, do hit the like button and also share this video with your other friends who are using Notion as if it were just a note-taking system. Poor guys, I used to do that before. Let them get benefit. If you want to stay updated on our upcoming videos, you may need to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications to get notified immediately as I release more addictive videos in this series. I'm out.